الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Dear respected elders and brothers السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Please repeat after me الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا حبيب الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله صلى الله تعالى عليك وسلم Now before we start the topic for this week just want to go over or we'll expand on a point that we mentioned last week uh, on Saturday aura, okay, so which means covering covering the private re- area. Now, does anyone remember what we what is defined as the aura for men? That's it. The area between the navels and the bottom part of the knees. Bottom of the knees. So the area between the navel and the bottom part of the knees. So if I stand from the side, navel starts where your belly button, so just above that, to the bottom of the knees, okay. And it's not just the front, it's also the back. It's like a whole round. Okay? So, you need to remember, so we need to remember that as well. Okay? Because some people, especially in the summer, you see this sometimes, they wear, they wear a top, and because it's really hot, they won't wear anything underneath. Okay? Um, some of you are smiling, so you know what I'm going to say next. You know, you go into Ruku, and then you can see the bottom part of their back. Alright? And that bit is the part which is defined as the aura, that should be covered all the time, not just in namaz. Now, if that bit shows when you're going to ruku or when you're going to sajda, then that condition where you have to cover that part is not met no more. So your namaz won't count, you'll have to repeat it. Okay? So if that ever happens, so you need to make sure you wear something long enough that covers it, or wear something underneath that you've tucked in like a vest or something. Does everyone understand that, yeah? Okay. Now, this is this point of covering the aura is not only for salah, but it's also for day to day. Okay, we must have this covered all the time, right? The only the only people that can see that, that area is either your wife or if you're young, then your parents. Okay. Now, a common time when people tend to disobey this rule or go against this rule is when they're swimming or when when they're playing some sports and they're wearing shorts. Okay. When you're playing sports, it's easy. Because instead of wearing shorts, wear some tracksuit bottoms or wear some joggers or something. But when you're swimming, it can be a little bit tricky. But you can get swimwear that would cover from your navel to your knees. Okay, so that will cover your aura. And it would especially urge the parents to, um, especially if when they're sending their kids for swimming as part of their schools, give them or find some swimwear that actually covers that region. Because you want to teach them from a young age about this modesty and humility. Okay, we want to cover these parts. And especially in today's society. Okay. So that's the point I wanted to mention from last week. This week, as mentioned in the slide, we're going to talk about the faraid in Salah and everything you need is on page 7. It'll be books. So we're going to go a bit into more detail of each, each farad and also what constitutes to a rakat. Now, there are a total of seven faraid in Salah which make up the major parts of namaz. Okay? If anyone misses a faraid action, so the word faraid just means it's a plural of farad. If anyone misses a faraid action, then his salah will be invalid and he will need to repeat his salah. Okay? The salah won't count, you'll have to do it again. Now the first one is takbir e tahrima. Okay? Now you don't need to co- copy the whole slide, just the top bullet point there. Where takbir e tahrima is saying Allahu Akbar at the start of the prayer. Okay? Now this is done to start the prayer. And it is called tahrima, and it comes from the root word haram, haram meaning forbidden. Because once you start namaz, then things are normally allowed, like eating, drinking, speaking, these things become haram upon you, until you finish your namaz. So that's why it's called tahrima. And you have to say it loud enough, so that you can hear it yourself. Okay? Now the takbir is said standing up facing the Qibla with the hands raised up and the hands must be facing the Qibla as well so if you look at me for one moment 
All right, some people put their hands like that. You can't, don't make your palms face each other. Make sure they're facing forward, okay? We'll go in that, into that in a bit more detail in a couple of, couple of weeks when we go through the practical session. Um, but I thought I'd just mention it now as well. So I'll let it, it just give you a bit of time to um, finish writing some of that down. Okay, now before we move on to the next one, Qiyam, does anyone know what Qiyam is? Yeah, that's right. So, Qiyam means to stand. Stand and perform namaz. That is a farad action. This is the first action we do when we start salah. So, we already started standing anyway, so we're standing as we do it. As we do it. Now, it is compulsory to stand for every single farad and wajib prayer unless someone is physically unable to do so, so they cannot stand, or they're unable to go into sajda from a, sta- from a standing position. Now, a hadith mentioned in Bukhari states, Salli qa'iman fa illam tastati fa qa'idan fa illam tastati fa ala janbin. Which translates to pray while standing, and if you can't, then pray while sitting. And if you cannot even do that, then pray lying down on your side. Okay? So you have to pray, and praying standing up if you can is farad, but if you can't, then you're pardoned from this. Because Allah Ta'ala, He does not ask you to do any more than what you're capable of. Okay? So if you cannot stand, then at that point, that farad does not apply to you, and the reward for your namaz won't be less. Okay, if you physically cannot stand, you won't get less reward for doing this. But for nafil prayers, anyone remember what nafil means? Yeah, what does nafil mean though? Optional, Optional yeah, voluntary. Okay, so nafil prayers are prayers that you just do as and when you feel like it, but there are certain nafil prayers with the salah. So as Yasin mentioned, in Zohar there's two nafil, and in Maghrib there's two nafil as well. So for nafil, it is permissible to pray sitting down. You can pray sitting down, alright? It's not, it's not for us to stand up in praying nafil, but the reward for this salah will be half of that if you offer it standing up, okay? So praying sitting down is better than not praying at all, but praying standing up is double the reward. Okay, shall we move on to Kira'ah? Anyone know what that means? Recitation, yeah. So to recite any part of the Quran is compulsory. Okay. Now it does not necessarily need to be Surah Fatiha. We'll come to that next week, but Surah Fatiha itself is wajib to pray. But to pray any part of the Quran is fard. Okay. Now, it's a fard in the first two rakats of any fard salah and in all rakats of a wajib, sunnah, nafil prayers. And the minimum that you must recite is that either three small ayahs or one long ayah. Now, that's when you're praying yourself. If you're praying behind an imam, the muqtadi, which is someone who prays behind an imam, he should remain silent. So he should just either listen to the imam, but if the imam is praying zohar and asr where they pray quietly, then you just remain silent. Because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he has said, and this is mentioned in Sunan al-Nasai, إِنَّمَا الْإِمَامُ لِيُؤْتَمَّ بِهِ فَإِذَا كَبَّرَ فَكَبِّرُوا وَإِذَا قَرَأَ فَأَنْسِتُوا The imam is appointed to be followed. Okay, so the imam is the leader and everyone follows him. So when he says takbir, say the takbir. So when the imam says Allahu Akbar, you say Allahu Akbar as well. And when, the, when he recites, so when he prays the Quran, be silent. So you stay quiet and listen. Okay, so just give you another minute to write that down, but you just need to write the first bullet point there just to recite any part of the Quran is compulsory. Everyone ready to move on? Yeah. yeah. So what's Ruku then? I know you've asked, answered too many times. Yeah. Do you, st- do you mind standing up and showing everyone? That's good. Yeah, sit back down. So, ruku. This is a bowing down action. Okay, so in English we would call it bowing down. And it must be done in every single rakat of salah. So, it means to bend the back and lower the head. The minimum that you must bend is so that you can grab your knees with your hands. That's the minimum. Okay? But to do it perfectly, the back and the head, it must be flat. So, perfectly flat, parallel with the ground. 
And the minimum minimum needed for the fard to be fulfilled is that you stay in the position for the time it takes to read one tasbih. Okay? So you don't go down, come straight back up. You go down, you got to stay for a minimum of one second. You know, to say the word subhanallah takes one second. And then you come back up. That's a minimum. Okay? We'll go through the, the perfect way in a couple of weeks. But at the moment, we're just going through the fard. Now, if someone is sitting and praying, remember we said if someone's unable to stand and pray, then he should sit and pray. Then to do ruku, all he needs to do is put his hands on his knees and just bend forward a little bit. Okay? So you may have seen people do this. I'll give you a, another minute to write that down. Okay, so we'll move on to the next one, sajda. Yeah, so it means the English word is prostration. The English word is prostration. Now this is compulsory to perform twice in every rakat. Okay, so there was one ruku, but there's two sajdas every rakat. And it must be done on a hard floor, firm floor. So you can feel it on your nose and your forehead. You shouldn't do it on a soft, cushiony surface. So you should be able to feel the hardness of the ground. The proper way to prostrate is to place the forehead and nose on the ground, as well as the hands, both knees and both sets of toes. So if you can, all ten toes have to be like the, the base of the toes. So if you look at my hand, and this was my foot, that bit there, that you bend like that, all ten of them has to be uh, touching, the, touching the ground. You remember the hard part of the bone, no, the hard part of the nose bone, so you know the tip, not just the tip, look this way, not just the tip, but the whole bone, starting from the top, has to be in contact with the ground. Some people, they might not know, some of them, they might be a bit lazy, they just touch the tip to the ground and their forehead. But you need to make sure the whole bone is touching the, um, is touching the ground in contact with the floor. Again, we'll go over this in more detail when we go through the practical session and we'll probably split into groups at that stage as well, so we'll, sh- we'll be able to show you in, in smaller groups. So I'll give you another minute to write that down. But in the meantime, does anyone want to come to the front and show how to do sajda? So just stand up somewhere there and face that way and do sajda. Yeah, and you can come back up. Okay, you can come back up. MashaAllah. Okay, so you see the way he went down. He did it. He did it. Bang on. Perfect. Uh, but we'll go through that in more detail in, in a couple of weeks. Um, so everyone finished with that slide? No. Yes. no? We'll okay, the only point you have to write down for this section is prostration. Okay, so the mm-hmm. third bullet point, prostration. Okay. Yeah, because... If you look further in your book, you don't have to do that now, but we mentioned sajda in more detail, and we'll come on to that in a moment. Not in a moment, sorry, in a couple of weeks. Alright, so moving on to the next one, Qaeda Akira. Anyone know what that means? Yep, at the yard position, but that's Qaeda. I want Qaeda Akira. The last sitting. So the final sitting, that's what I've written there. So, the final sitting. The sitting position... Um, I'll get someone to uh, show it in a moment. But the sitting position, uh, again, we're going to more detail later. But we must sit, the for this to sit for a length of time that it would take us to read the tashahud, which is the at-tahiyat. Okay? Reading tashahud itself is wajib. Okay? But to do the for you must just sit in the, in, for that long. Okay? So does anyone want to show that position, Asif? You can come a little bit forward if you want so people can see. Okay, so there has to be a certain foot position there. <coughs> which we'll go through later on. But the way it is, your right foot has to be standing up, upright, with the toes facing the Qibla. The left foot is horizontal, and you sit on your left foot. And your hands are on your thighs. Okay, Don't make your hands go over onto your knees. Keep it a little bit back so it's on your thighs. Okay? And when you're in this skydar position, you look into your lap. 
Okay, and we'll repeat that again when we, when, when we get there. So you can sit back in your place. Okay, so we nearly finished now. We're only on our last point. A short session today. Everyone ready? Okay, it's the last bit. Kuruj bi sun ihi. What does that mean? No, doing salam is means doing salam. What does kuruj bi sun ihi mean? Doing salam is a way to do kuruj bi sun ihi. Indicating the end of salah. Okay, the, the literal meaning of kuruj bi sunihi is indicating the end of salah. Once you've completed qaida akira, then the fara'id of salah have been completed. Okay, this in itself, some people they don't say it's a farad, it's just ending, ending your namaz. Because, you know, one way or another, your namaz is going to end. Okay, you're not even going to be able to hold wuzu to do namaz forever. So, once you've completed qaida akira, the fara'id of salah have all been completed. But we need to indicate the end of salah. And we do this by performing salam. Salam itself is wajib to do. Okay, to say, say the word as-salam, that's a wajib. But that's how we end namaz. Okay? Just before we finish off, what makes up one rakat? So the meaning of one rakat, I'm not asking if I'm going to say it. <laughs> the meaning of one rakat is one, one unit of prayer. Okay? Remember we went through the units before we had the little table of you know four, two, etc. Um, so each for action you perform it that makes up one rakat. So we start off with takbir tahima. That's just for the first rakat only. Then qiyam, qirat, ruku, both sajdas that makes up one rakat. Okay, and the final rakat involves qaida akira as well. There is something called qaida ula which comes in between two rakats. Uh, after the second rakat, so in between a pair of rakats, but that's a wajib, and we'll go through that next week. Okay. Now, just before we finish off, I'm just going to quickly go through them one by one, just for um, just if someone's uh, missed out writing them down. So I want you guys to tell me. I know it's written there, but what's takbir tahrima? Saying Allah Akbar. Okay. What root word does it come from? Haram. And why? Yeah, because things that we normally allowed to do, which are like eat, drink, speak, we're not allowed to do that in namaz, okay, until we finish namaz. So that's why we call it haram. Yeah, we'll get someone from the uh, from this side to answer the next one. So qiyam, again, it's written there. What does it mean? Standing. To stand up, to stand up and pray. Is anyone, what happens if you can't stand and pray? You're allowed to sit down. Or lie down if you can't sit down, okay. Um... If you have to stand up and lean on something, that's fine as well. Okay, so if you have to use a stick, you can use a stick. All right? But if you sit down because you can't stand, your reward is not lessened. So it's not less. Kira? That's right, yeah. If the imam's reciting, then you don't recite, you listen. So when you're praying behind the imam, but even if the imam's praying Zohar or Asar, where he doesn't pray loudly, you can't listen to anything, you just remain silent because the imam's, the imam's um, recitation is enough for everyone. Uh, the imam is very unlikely to pray less than three small verses. The, yeah, the imam is the appointed one, so he'll know. Okay, not anyone can be an imam. Okay, now, next one, ruku. How many rukus are there in? One rakat, just one. That's right. Um, and what's the perfect way to do ruku? No worries. That's right. And I didn't write this on the slide, but you got to keep your elbows straight as well. Okay. Um, Sajda. Sorry. Prostration, that's right. So that's the English word for prostration. Uh, the English word for sajda is prostration. Um, again, twice in every rakat. We'll go through the proper way to do sajda in a couple of weeks. Um, Qaida Akira is the final sitting. And again, as I said before, we must sit for the time it takes to read at tahiyat So about 40 seconds or so. 50 seconds, depends how fast or slow you pray. 
Um, and the last one, Kuruj bi sunihi, again indicating the end of salah. Okay, and we do salam, but salam itself is wajib. So that's everything for this week. Um, on the next page, you have a crossword. Some of the stuff on this crossword, some of the clues there have already been mentioned. Some have not been mentioned. Some will be mentioned, and some won't be mentioned. Okay, so you'll have to. Uh, some of them, some of them, you'll have to figure it out for yourself. But it's just for you to do at home in your own time. Um, if at the end you do struggle, we'll go through the uh, through the answers on the last session. The word search, there's a word search there as well, but we won't go through the answers on that because you just have to look for words. Okay.